Set 4 saw the conclusion of Disney Locana's first year and gave us answers to the overarching narrative featuring an incredibly powerful glimmer of Ursula. Not only her return is surrounded by a lot of betrayal, but she also used her powers to entangle other glimmers, as well as causing natural disasters along the way. Let's take a look at Ursula's entangled glimmer side by side with their original versions, as well as exploring the story further. Now take a gulp and take a breath, and go ahead and sign the scroll. Let's do this! Before we get started, just a quick disclaimer. The background story we cover in this video is a combination of official information shared by Ravensburger, information collected by Lorcana Player, the flavor text printed on the different cards, as well as some of our own interpretations in the matter. Please bear that in mind when watching this video. Ursula's return seems to be the conclusion of an overarching saga that started with the first chapter and is now closing out Lorcana's first year in full force. Taking a deeper look at different events that happen across these four sets, we can summarize key moments that led to the return of Ursula Sea Witch Queen and how she rose to become the new ruler of Lorcana. This Ursula is the most powerful of all Ursula's Glimmers. As a quick recap, Glimmers are a new version of a Disney character that only exists in the world of Lorcana. Using their incasters, Illumineers can make images rise off the page bringing these Glimmers to life. Because of that, it is common to see many versions of the same character, some even mixed with the imagination of Illumineers themselves. With Ursula, this is no different. In Ursula's return, we face the wrath of two different Ursulas, the one we got to learn more about back in Into the Inklands with Dreamborn Ursula Deceiver of All, but also a completely new Floodborn Ursula, Sea Witch Queen. But how did all this start? If we go back to Rise of the Floodborn, when Martin opened the locked lore book, he unleashed a big flood that changed everything that he touched, but this may also be what freed Ursula, Sea Witch Queen, from it. This Ursula has been previously locked away in an inky chamber at the Luminary, likely by the curator, once he realized the strength of the evil power that she possessed. Now freed, she needed the help of unique and powerful items, along with a bunch of lore, to restore her power to its full potential. But she couldn't do this alone. During Into the Inklands, Ursula Deceiver of All is often looking for the most powerful lore with the help of Jetson, Flotsam and other villains. This was likely to help returning Ursula Sea Witch Queen's powers once again. You can see some of this information illustrated across some of these different cards. But the first step to making this happen started way back in the first chapter. With the binding contract signed by Aerie on Human Legs, Ursula stole her voice and used her singing power as a way to hypnotize and entangle different glimmers, in order to complete her evil schemes. That's likely why the Silver of All is so strong and has the ability to sing so many times. Once Ursula the Silver of All and other villains managed to steal all the different items and lore needed and is now in control of a lot of glimmers, Ursula Sea Witch Queen tricks the other Ursula to believe that together they would rule the world. She presents her with a plan and convinces her to sign this new scroll. What she didn't expect is that this new signed contract was in fact taking away from the Silver of All all the singing power previously stolen from Ariel and giving it all to the Sea Witch Queen instead. As the Silver of All realizes that she's been double-crossed, she tries to attack the other Ursula. However, the Sea Witch Queen asks the help of Flotsam and Jetsam to steal both the Trident and the Hexwell crown to herself. Who would have thought that Ursula would do something like that, am I right? With that, Ursula Sea Witch Queen completes the last step of her evil plan by truly cementing herself as the ruler of Lorcana, entangling Triton's Trident and the Hexwell Crown and substantially growing in size. Now it is up to the Illumineers to face off the powerful Ursula and her entangled glimmers to bring back peace to the world of Disney Lorcana. Now that you know a little bit more about the lore, let's take a look at each of the glimmers affected by Ursula's mind control. Minnie Mouse White Eye Diver was the first and best victim likely because she was unfortunately already adventuring under the sea at that time. Once entangled, Minnie no longer is Wide Eye, but now Wild Eye Diver. Prince Eric is another one to fall under Ursula's entangling spell. We can see that this happened during his wedding with Vanessa, if you compare the outfit he's wearing when entangled. He goes from Ursula's groom to Green Groom. Unfortunately, Anna was also a target. Ursula convinced Hans to bring Anna to herself by using Kristoff's hat as a bait. Anna fell for it and believed that Kristoff needed her help and she braves into the storm in search of him. If you look back at Anna's card, you can see some of the entanglement powers in the sky, which leads us to believe that this is how Anna is captured by Ursula and turned into the ensnared sister. The Mad Hatter didn't need much convincing to be honest. According to Ursula, he's simply wild for parties. All it takes are some good tea and amazing hosting skills, turning him from the gracious host to the sinister host. 
I gotta be honest, I wouldn't mind joining his parties myself. With Hercules, we couldn't find much information on how he went from the divine hero to the manipulated hero. But courageous as he is, we could only imagine that he went straight to Ursula to try stopping her, but got hypnotized by her singing voice in the process. Hey Hey is a special case. Neither he nor Ursula know exactly how he ended up there. But this isn't a surprise for any of us, right? She's taking any addition to her entanglement troupe. Hey Hey goes from bumbling rooster to peckish ball. Finally, the last good guy to get entangled was Bruno Madrigal. It sounds like he was a big piece for Ursula's plan, likely because of his power to visualize prophecies. Bruno turns into the unspeakable seer when entangled, and he and his prophecy is pretty much the main star in the trailer that came out when Ursula's return was first announced. Perhaps a little bit of a stretch, but if you're looking back at Into the Inkland's Mermaid Lagoon location card, we notice that the mermaids tell Peter Pan that one of her sisters has gone missing. Could this potentially be some of the mermaids we see entangled in the Triton's Daughters Discordant Chorus card? Aren't all mermaids daughters of Triton anyway? Who knows? Ursula being who she is didn't target only the good guys. She also managed to entangle other villains too. Jafar Royal Vizier is one of them. She states that he was a difficult one to mind control, but she always get her way in the end. Once entangled, he turned into Jafar Double Crosser Vizier. Magica the Spell was another one of Ursula's victims. I find it a little bit ironic, given that Magica helped Ursula get the Triton's Trident back in into the Inklands. Magica goes from the thieving sorceress to the shadowy sorceress. Tamatoa So Shiny is also added to this list. It seems that he was used as a big distraction against the Illumineers, likely because of his huge size. When entangled, he is now known as the Grabby Crab. Gaston Arrogant Hunter was also on Ursula's path, turning into Gaston Egotistical Bully. Funny enough, his card stat switches between its strength and willpower when going from normal to entangled. And then we have Captain Hook Forceful Duelist. When mind control, he turns into the Devious Duelist. It sounds like Ursula is a big fan of Hook and she sees a lot of herself in him, so it is an obvious choice after all. I wonder how much he actually tried to resist. Finally, we can't forget about Flatson and Jetson. I actually don't think this was much of a force entanglement per se. If anything, their power just grew with Ursula's Sea Witch Queen, as she was recovering all her strength from the items and lore collected. But it is not a surprise to see them at her side. They both go from the Ursula's Baby cards to Flotsam Wicked Defender, acting as Ursula's bodyguard, and Jetson Wicked Whisperer, acting more as of the aggressive one. And there we have it, all 14 characters that Ursula entangled in her process to become the new ruler of Lorcana. Did you have the chance to play the new Illumineers quest Deep Trouble and face her entangled crew? If not, go check out our latest video showing how to play this amazing co-op game. I hope you enjoyed this video, stay tuned and happy questing!